Um, also about supplication in Jama'ah, in congregation, after the Fard Salah. Um, is this something from the Sunnah he asked for? For all Muslims at large, we have to abide by a very interesting and beautiful Islamic bylaw with regards to worship or mm-hmm. ibadat. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in one hadith, اِتَّبِعُوا وَلَا تَبْتَدِعُوا mm-hmm. Follow and do not innovate. Not a single narration, not a single hadith, not even a weak or fabricated hadith informed us that the Prophet ﷺ used to gather his companions after the prayer or instructed them after the prayer to raise their hands and make congregational dua. People made up things and admitted them to the ibadat which would be rejected. The Prophet ﷺ said in Aisha's hadith رضي الله تعالى عنها وأرضاها من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد. Somebody is going to pop up and say, Shaykh, but this is a good thing, isn't it? I say it is, but it was not prescribed. As a matter of fact, don't you think it's a good thing to pray an extra raka'ah in Maghrib instead of leaving the poor Maghrib only three raka'ahs? Yeah, your mind might tell you that it's a good thing, but it will be rejected. The whole prayer will be invalid. So follow and do not innovate. Making dua is prescribed and described throughout your entire life. Any time, raise your hands and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in times which you think that this time, it is a must to do this dua and in congregation because it is a part of the prayer. To the extent, ya akhi, some people think that after the salah I have to turn right and left and shake hands and say haraman and jam'an. They think this is an inseparable part from the mandate of the prayer, mm. which is not. Uh, once somebody was uh, praying with me in the haram, in uh, haraman, which means this is an Arabic uh, tradition, they say, which means may Allah grant us a prayer in the haram. I said, we're already here in the haram. You know, but it's a it's a tradition that the Prophet ﷺ did not prescribe, nor did.